In our health cast today, the high cost and limited insurance coverage for a popular weight loss drug. It's driving some to seek potentially unsafe alternatives now. Dr. Michelle Perlman is a gastroenterologist and obesity specialist, and she says many people are turning to compounding pharmacies which can customize medications that are not commercially available and often at a much lower cost than your prescription drugs. Well, that sounds like a reasonable option, but what are some reasons why it may not be ideal? One is, it, although they have to follow certain regulatory agencies and guidelines, you don't have the same scrutiny that medications that, are gone, that have been tested and approved by the FDA have. So you don't quite know what you're getting. Perlman goes on to say the testing has shown that the dosage on some of these compounded products can be quite variable, which can lead to unpredictable outcomes and potentially harmful side effects as well. And the maker of one of those prescription weight loss drugs says it's now limiting starter doses as demand is outpacing supply. Novo Nordisk, maker of Wegovi, expects many people will have a very hard time filling their prescriptions at the lower initial doses through September. The supply interruptions aren't expected to affect higher doses of Wegovi for people who are already taking it. The FDA approved Wagovi for weight loss in 2021 for people, though, who have a high body mass index. And another new study out there suggesting the vaccine protection against COVID-19 may wear off after six months. Researchers found that protection against the COVID variant, Omicron, decreased to about 14% at six months. Researchers say the findings show why it's important for people to get those booster shots for their added protection. Well, if you filed your tax returns with TurboTax from 2016 to 2018, you might be getting some cash back. The company will be paying $141 million to customers as part of a 2022 settlement. Millions of Americans who were charged for tax preparation that should have been free will get settlement checks beginning next week. Payments range from $29 to $85. And a road into one of the most popular national parks is closed for repairs. Big Oak Flat Road into Yosemite Park has a crack about 200 feet long and up to four feet deep. There's an embankment below the road that has water flowing through it. Officials are worried about a collapse. Yosemite is working on repairs, but the closure could last weeks into the busy travel season in the summer. Peloton shares falling more than 13% this week as the company reported a larger than expected loss last quarter. Peloton is left with unsold stationary bikes and treadmills. The company is shifting its sales from equipment to subscriptions. And Ginny Craig is going out of business. The weight loss chain of 40 years made that announcement on Facebook last night. Ginny Craig's program provided nutritionally, nutritionally excuse me, balanced menus designed to help people lose weight. Uncertainty surrounding its future started last week after reports that the company was alerting employees of layoffs and closing some of its nearly 500 weight loss centers. The company's website is no longer active. And Google is giving us a sneak peek of its first foldable smartphone in this video posted on social media. The Pixel Fold has a vertical hinge uh, that when opened reveals a tablet-like display inside. The company is expected to release more details about this phone when it hosts its annual developer conference next week. Several companies using artificial intelligence to their advantage. Slack unveiling a new feature that allows users to tack to a chat box like a coworker and have it do things like draft messages and summarize threads. It's called the Slack GPT and it's now embedded into the platform. For example, you can have summarized messages that have come in since you last checked. And Microsoft now allowing the general public to use its new AI powered Bing search engine. You just need to sign in using the Edge browser. The service was debuted to a limited number of people about three months ago. Google is also adding a similar AI feature to its search engine. And still ahead, a bizarre discovery in the woods. The mystery surrounding hundreds of pounds of spaghetti. Where'd that come from? <laughs> Story next.
Never miss a beat with Local 10 Plus. And it's right here in our own backyard. A one-stop shop for all your news. North Rock Island Road has since reopened. From traffic updates and weather alerts to cooking, home projects, health, H2O, and politics. Defining moment for the governor. We've got you covered anytime, anywhere. Local 10 is... Finally here at 4, a story that will leave you feeling quite, well, noodle-brained. Pasta in the woods sounds like the name of maybe a children's book, right? But it's actually something that was found in Old Bridge, New Jersey. Look at that. Hundreds of pounds of spaghetti illegally dumped near a creek bed. It's not known exactly how it ended up there or if anyone has been charged. They even know who did it. But we do know that this El Dante mess was officially cleaned up. So random. That's right. Very odd. Maybe not something you'd expect during a hike. No. Just all that pasta. <laughs> to, to find pasta there. on the side of the bridge. Ooh. Yeah. That's a little odd. All right. <laughs> the news at five starts now for you. Okay, Christy, thank you. Right now in local 10 news at five, the father of a former MMA fighter is out of jail after being arrested for a shooting at his son's home. So why didn't anyone pick him up? And a tragedy in Broward County, but a young boy is gunned down at a senseless shooting rampage. The royal rehearsals continue as the clock ticks down to the coronation of King Charles III and Local 10 is there live. And Broward students have a clear choice when it comes to choosing a backpack for next school year. Plus, we're seeing what it was like for police officers caught up in the chaos after a shooting on South Beach during spring break. Local 10 News starts right now. And we will get to those stories in just a moment. But first, we want to say hello to my co-anchor, Nicole, who is joining us live from London ahead of King Charles III's coronation tomorrow. Nicole, hi. Hey, Calvin. Today was all about those final details. The royals rehearsed for the first coronation of a king since 1937. I'll show you everything that happened today coming up. And we are following breaking news in Broward. A student arrested after making a threat. And this is happening at Terra Vela High School in Coral Springs. And let's get right out now to Local 10's Cody Weddle, live with this developing story. Cody. And Calvin and Ian, we have just learned from Coral Springs Police that they have arrested 18-year-old Katrina Petit in relation to these threats we saw in recent days. As you said there, she is a student here at Taravella High School. Again, those threats were spread around on social media in recent days, and they pretty graphically described how she threatened uh, to conduct a school shooting at an unspecified uh, school. So we heard from Bro Broward County Schools in relation to that. They praised the people who came forward with this information. They also emphasized that if this person was caught, they could face felony charges. This news just came down. So again, we have learned that Coral Springs Police have arrested a student here at Taravella High School. She is 18 year old Katrina Petit in relation to these threats we have been hearing in recent days. Of course, that scared a lot of students, a lot of parents, but we heard from police and they said they couldn't find any credible threat. We're going to continue to reach out to police here as well as try to speak to students and parents here uh, to find find out more uh, about this young girl who has been arrested. For now, that's the information we have here in Coral Springs. I'm Cody Weddle, Local 10 News. Okay, Cody, thanks a lot. The father of Jorge Masvidal gets out of jail after being arrested for a shooting and charged with a very serious crime. Masvidal Sr. was arrested and charged with attempted second-degree murder for a shooting yesterday at the former MMA star's home. And now we're learning more about what led up to that violent confrontation. Local 10's Janine Stanwood is live with this developing story. Janine. Masvidal Sr. bonded out of jail here at the Turner Guilford Knight Correctional Facility earlier this afternoon. Nobody came to pick him up, but he had plenty to say to us. Your son coming to get you? No. Walking out of jail is 67-year-old Jorge Masvidal Sr., father of the former UFC fighter of the same name. He faces a charge of second-degree attempted murder after police say he shot a man inside his son's six-bedroom house on Thursday afternoon. Eso es mentira. Masvidal Sr. says that's all a lie. He was just with friends and doesn't know why he was arrested and claims he doesn't know about the shooting. No sé, que no sé, no sé. But detectives say it all started with some kind of argument inside the house just outside Kendall. The victim, Luis Leoncini, who we're told is a family acquaintance, said Masvidal Sr. shot him in the arms. He was rushed to the hospital as police converge on the home. 
They were able to get the other members of the uh, of the residents out of the home without incident. Detectives scour the residents and according to their report, the search revealed a 38 caliber revolver inside a kitchen cabinet. Masvidal Sr. was questioned and arrested. His mixed martial arts practicing son was not there when it happened, but did show up later, not thrilled to see us. Masvidal Sr., keep in mind, is facing an extremely serious charge. He says tonight he's looking forward to being with his son and celebrating Cinco de Mayo. That victim, by the way, is still recovering. He was last listed in stable condition. We're in West Miami-Dade. I'm Janine Stanwood, Local 10 News. Okay, Janine, thank you. VSO has identified the suspect in a deadly triple shooting this morning in Dania Beach. Witnesses say that gunman shot a man outside of a 7-Eleven before walking in and targeting a boy. Local 10's Christina Vasquez is live with what she has learned. Christina. Just after 11 last night, as Maximil Limos was working at the Laredo Taco Company inside this Dania Beach 7-Eleven. Shot somebody in the neck right here. As 11-year-old Saeed Nabig Ali was buying ice cream with his brother and friends. Just walked out of nowhere and started shooting. Limos saw a man who police have now identified as 29-year-old Darren Rosenthal, fire a shot at a man sitting in a van in the parking lot. He was just chilling in his car, minding his business. Shot him right in the neck. Then Lima said Rosenthal walked inside and shot and killed the boy before turning the gun on himself. He shot him in the head once, and then on the floor he went pow pow again, and then he just took it himself. One of Saeed's teachers sharing with Local 10 News a statement his academy shared with the school community that read in part, he was in the fifth grade, and he was a pleasant, well-mannered, and bright boy. He loved to play chess and always got excited at the thought of playing soccer. At this time, the motive for this shooting is unknown. Detectives on this triple shooting case are working to understand what motivated the shooter. That adult male gunman then fatally shot himself. BSO tells us so far investigators believe the gunman and both victims, the man in his car in the parking lot who was rushed to an area hospital for treatment, and the 11-year-old who died, did not know each other. This does appear to be a random act. Court records show in 2014 and 2016, Rosenthal had a record of past charges to include drug possession in Miami-Dade. And back here live in Dania Beach, you can see that the crime scene tape is still up so many hours into this investigation, but detectives have so much more work to do. The details in this case are absolutely chilling. BSO says if you have any information to give them a call. Reporting live for you, I'm Christina Vasquez, Local 10 News. Christina, thank you. We are counting down to the coronation of King Charles III on Saturday. And First Lady Jill Biden is already in London as rehearsals take place at Westminster Abbey. Local 10's Nicole Perez live now with all of the famous faces that she's seen so far. Nicole. Well, today was a day of a lot of unannounced visits that surprised a lot of people. Very welcome surprises. The king was very busy today as well after greeting the public. He hosted a lunch with leaders of the Commonwealth and the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. He then hosted a reception dinner at Buckingham Palace. All of this in preparation for a moment he's waited for his whole life. We all put our hands out and he shook our hands and he at least said thank you for coming. The royal family stopping and greeting the public, shaking hands and taking pictures. I am not going to wash my hand again. <laughs> The surprise stop in front of Buckingham Palace comes just hours after a rehearsal at Westminster Abbey. The king and queen arriving at the site of the coronation this morning, along with Prince William. It was King Charles, Camilla, the queen, and um, that's all we managed to see. A mixture of feelings, really. Um, obviously, quite starstruck, but overall, it was well worth the wait. One royal family member noticeably absent from rehearsals, Prince Harry, who has not been given a role in the coronation. There are lots of issues there, and hopefully uh, Harry will get back with his family. As the big day gets closer, security has revved up across the city. Police officers escorting heads of state arriving for the coronation to Downing Street to meet with Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. Also arriving on Downing Street, First Lady Dr. Jill Biden, along with her granddaughter Finnegan, to meet with the Prime Minister's wife. The group meeting with veterans and later visiting a local school. Very proud, very honored, and also the main thing is it brings everybody together from around the world, which is something that is very special. The excitement building as people wait for this historic moment. We appreciate the English, we appreciate their tradition. Uh, we're happy to be here in this important time in history. 
Well, there is a lot of anticipation for tomorrow, but the forecast does not look great. It is expected to rain. A lot of people we spoke to said they are just going to plan accordingly, bring their umbrellas, wear the right clothing, but they want to be there to witness this moment in history. Calvin and Eden, I'll send it back to you. And Nicole, before you go, we know adult members of the royal family have had rehearsals, but we got to know what about the kiddos? So the kids rehearsed earlier in the week. Prince George is one of the page of, pages of honor in the coronation. And the Princess of Wales, Kate, said that the kids were excited but nervous, as we can all expect. It's going to be a big day for them tomorrow, too. I bet they're going to be so adorable. All right, thank you, Nicole. And look for more live reports from Nicole in London coming up at 6 and leading up to the coronation tomorrow. The World Health Organization says that COVID-19 is no longer a global public health emergency. The WHO first declared the emergency in January of 2020, and nearly 7 million people have died from the virus worldwide. The organization's director general said today that the pandemic has been on a downward trend for more than a year, allowing most countries to return to life as we knew it before COVID-19. Dr. Rochelle Walensky, the head of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in Atlanta, says that she is resigning effective June 30th. She wrote in a letter to President Biden that the CDC saved and improved lives from, uh, lives from the greatest infectious disease threat we have seen in over 100 years. And we are staying on top of breaking news out of Harris County, Texas, where an explosion at an industrial plant in the Deer Park area has caused a major blaze. You're taking a live picture right now from the scene. We now know at least two people have been reported injured since that fire broke out around 3 p.m. this afternoon. Crews have responded to the scene and are working to put out the flames from above and on the ground. The cause of that fire is under investigation, and we do know that all employees of that plant have been evacuated. Take it out of Wall Street today on the final day of trading. The Dow was up 546 points after a bad day yesterday. The Dow ending at 33,674. A huge weekend here in South Florida. F1 is in town for the Miami Grand Prix. And local tennis sports director Will Manso joining us live now from Miami Gardens with all of the action already getting underway. Will. Yeah, the practice is getting underway behind me here at Hard Rock Stadium. A lot of excitement. Best drivers of the world, the best 20 on the 10 teams. And people from all over the world are here in South Florida this weekend to catch the action. But there is one driver, just one who's coming home for this weekend. It is a special moment for rookie Logan Sargent. Williams Racing rookie getting the opportunity to practice at a place inside Hard Rock Stadium where as a kid he would watch Dolphins games. He was a huge sports fan in South Florida, dreaming of one day becoming an F1 driver, and here he is now. What a homecoming for him. He expects about 100 family members and friends to be here throughout the weekend and a race day Sunday. Here's what Sargent told us about how the week has gone so far. Yeah, it's good. It's good to be home. I got to uh, spend Tuesday with my parents and my family at, at home and just uh, get out on the beach, get in the water. felt good. And uh, yeah, it's been, been a busy last couple of days, but um, we're ready for it. And uh, it's going to be it's going to be a tough weekend. It's going to be hot, physical and uh, track. I don't know, but we're, we're ready to take on the challenge. We are ready to bring you our primetime special Maestro Del Bell Tequila ready to race. It airs tonight at 8 o'clock. Within that, you'll see my conversation. We went all the way to the UK to watch Logan train, where he got started there in the UK in his race career for Williams Racing. We'll have everything you need to know as well to get you ready for the Miami Grand Prix. Again, that is at 8 o'clock. And then this weekend on Sunday, only one place you can watch the big race that is right here on Local 10. Sunday, our pre-race coverage starts at 1.30. Our Maestro Del Bell Tequila ready to race. Then you can watch the race right on Local 10. And following that, our finish line coverage after the race. So, yeah, if you want to be part of F1 and you're not coming here to Hard Rock Stadium, trust me, you want to keep it here on Local 10. We've got you covered throughout the weekend. Can't wait to get it started tonight at 8 o'clock. That's the story from Miami Gardens. I'm Will Manso, Local 10 News. Sounds very exciting. Thank you, Will. Every student in Broward County Schools is going to need a new backpack. And Local 10's Amy Viteri is in our newsroom to explain for us. Amy. Well, school officials say they're making this change to make schools safer. Now students and parents only have a clear choice when it comes to backpacks. More on that after the break. Plus, only Local 10 has the critical clue that could help track down a hit-and-run driver who left the victim with broken bones. And find out how police tracked down a college student accused of terrorizing his classmates in a deadly stabbing spree when Local 10 News comes right back.
Road has since reopened. From traffic updates and weather alerts to cooking, home projects, health, H2O, and politics. Defining moment for the governor. We've got you covered anytime, anywhere. Local chat is right there with you on the scene of breaking news, in the stands at sporting events, and exploring SoFlo's hidden gems. Stream at home or on the go, 24 hours a day, only on Local 10+. Plus. Social media is everywhere, and so are we. Reporting live at the White House in London, in Miami. Going live on here. Open daily, right here. And even trending on here. You're going to want to buckle up for this one. We bring the latest stories straight to your feed. How is one of the... Welcome back. Some major changes are coming to Broward County Public Schools starting next school year, and it all has to do with backpacks. Local 10 News reporter Amy Battieri in our newsroom to explain to us. Amy. Well, Calvin, starting August 21st, the first day of the new school year, students will only be able to carry clear backpacks and bags on school campuses. It's part of an effort to keep schools safe and secure for students and staff members. So let's take a look at what will be allowed. The new see-through requirement will apply to everyone from pre-K through 12th grade, but the rule does not apply to teachers, staff, volunteers, or visitors. Students will also have to bring in clear lunch boxes, purses, duffel bags, fanny packs, and so on. Mesh colored backpacks will not be permitted even if they are transparent. At the Broward Schools Commission meeting, board member Lori Alhadev had this to say when asked about those changes. I think it's vitally important that as a board that we continue to create layers of school safety protection in our schools and to be able to have clear backpacks you know, is it's so important because we have to prevent the weapons from getting into our schools. So this will act as a deterrent or, you know, hypothetically a security person could see what is in the backpack. There are some exceptions that will be permitted. They include a small pouch for personal hygiene items, thermal food containers carried inside of those newly required clear lunch boxes, as well as sports-specific carrying cases for athletic equipment and band equipment. Again, all of this takes effect at the start of the 2023-24 school year beginning in August. We're in the newsroom, Amy Viteri, Local 10 News. Okay, Amy, thank you. A 21-year-old accused of killing two people and critically injuring one more, one more person with a knife in a Northern California college town is now behind bars. Carlos Dominguez is facing two counts of homicide and one count of attempted homicide for the spree of stabbings. He pled not guilty in court today. One of the victims was a UC Davis student just weeks away from graduating. Police say Dominguez was also a student there until last week. He was separated from the school for academic reasons. 
That could be a motive for the stabbings, but police are still investigating. Officers say there's no indication Dominguez knew any of the victims. And we are seeing new video from the search of murder suspect Brian Koberger's home last year. Police department search warrant, come to the door. Koberger is charged with the murders of four University of Idaho students. He was arrested at his parents' home in Pennsylvania back in December of 2021. And hours later, police searched Koberger's home in Pullman, Washington, as well as his office on the Washington State University campus. And according to court documents, they found traces of blood on his mattress and a pillow. Hello, Officer. I am Officer Loengus. Stops being audio and video recorded. I think, I, know, I think you know why I stopped you. You ran the red light. What actually happened was I was stuck in the middle of the intersection. Yeah, so I was, I was behind you the whole left. time. Well, this is body cam video of Koberger being stopped by a Washington State University police officer for improperly stopping in an intersection. This incident happened about a month before Koberger allegedly killed the four university students. That officer gave Koberger a warning and let him go. He could face the death penalty if he's found guilty of four counts of first degree murder. Let's go ahead and take a live look from our Pembroke Park Tower cam. It is just a gorgeous day today, Betty. 83 degrees, the sun is out, and this is how we like to end the week. I know, one or two clouds adding mm -hmm. a little flavor, but yeah. those clouds not generating rainfall. We had a high of 88 today in Miami, so yes, it was a warm day, but not too humid, and that really has been the story, the theme for this week, not too humid and also dry. So we'll stay dry for the rest of the evening. Mainly clear skies around 9 o'clock tonight. Scatter clouds for the overnight hours with northeast winds. And with that easterly component to the winds and the winds aren't going to completely relax, that should hold our temperatures up. So once we drop into the 70s, we'll plan on staying in the 70s through the overnight hours. Here's the satellite and radar imagery for the entire state. We were void of precipitation, what, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and now here we are on Friday seeing this increase in clouds moving toward the north central part of the state and also some rain showers over the east northeastern Gulf and that action making a run at the peninsula. So we are starting to change things and more and more uh, the atmosphere will lend itself to some showers and storms over South Florida too. But the ridge of high pressure that has been dominating, it still does extend its reach up and over toward us. It's just that minor little things are able to happen on the periphery of that ridge, and that allows for some showers and storms to develop for us, and that's going to be the case this weekend. That doesn't mean we're going to have rain everywhere on Saturday. Our forecast model shows plenty of sunshine to start the day with showers or storms that do develop favoring inland portions of Broward Dade and especially favoring, say, Collier County and the west coast of South Florida. Fast forward to Sunday. Sunday morning, we'll have northeast winds. The forecast model showing we could have some showers right along the immediate east coast. So rain chance we're showing is higher in the seven-day planner on Sunday with the thinking that we'll have some early showers grazing the coastline. And then by the lunch hour, this forecast model showing we may still have a few showers out there, but as the afternoon plays out, we should start to trend drier on Sunday. Winds will be picking up the pace this weekend. By Sunday, we'll be sustained 15 to 20 miles per hour with that easterly wind flow. Tomorrow, winds will be around 10 to 15. This weekend, high temperatures climb to the mid 80s and we'll watch as the showers develop. Won't look as dry as we look this week, but it's not a washout either. Eden? Okay, Betty, thank you. We do have some breaking news to share. We're hearing reports of a possible drowning. Uh, this is near 10350 West Bay Harbor Drive in Bay Harbor Islands. We are hearing reports again of a toddler being pulled out of a pool. Uh, this is right by the bay. As you can see there, we're seeing live pictures from Sky 10. Again, reports of a possible drowning right now. Of course, we're going to keep an eye on this breaking news and share any more details as they come in. But we are hearing that one pediatric trauma alert patient is being taken by air rescue to the main trauma center to be treated there. Okay, still to come tonight, detectives have named the suspect in a deadly shooting in Broward County this morning. Witnesses say he shot a man outside of a 7-Eleven before going inside the store and shooting a young boy. We have new information from BSO, all new at 6. Happy Friday, everybody. It's time for Clay's Clowns, where you never celebrate until it's time to actually celebrate.
Good evening, South Florida. I'm Nicole Perez, and we've got a busy news day ahead of us. My journey in journalism started right here in South Florida and is taking me all over the world. Growing up, a basketball court was where I felt most at home. The one thing that connects me to South Florida is my family. I was raised in a typical South Florida household, and now I'm raising my family here too. Family's not an important thing. It's everything for me. And Local 10 News is not only where I work, it's home. Local 10's Nicole Perez, putting the local in Local 10. You're watching Local 10 Sports with Clay Ferrero. These NBA and NHL playoffs have been intense. They've been physical. They've been heated. But every now and then, they've been kind of funny, too. We'll start with number five on Clay's Claws, Mitchell Robinson of the Knicks at the free throw line. Uh, supposed to be a 15-foot <laughs> shot and you know, goes about 12 feet or so. Number four, Lakers Warriors. Steph Curry's going to miss the baseline jumper, but it's tipped in by Anthony Davis of the what? Lakers. He laughs it off. My favorite part, though, watch again. Kayvon Ludi of the Warriors raising his hands as he goes down the court trying to take credit for the basket. <laughs> Number three, Twins Royals. Jorge Polanco drilling this one hey. deep to right field. Polanco's going to go into his home run trot, celebrating the long ball. One problem. Oh, no. It actually hit the top of the wall and came back. Oh. It's not a home run. He's out. <laughs> oh. Number two, huge goal for Liverpool here to give him a late lead over Tottenham. Their manager, Jurgen Klopp, is pumped up. Unfortunately, his hamstring can't take the excitement. Oh. <laughs> grasping oh, down there. Hey. I'd love to say that I hey. haven't experienced that, but unfortunately, Father Time has caught up to all of us. <laughs> Number one, this guy is racing the Brewers cheese mascot, starts pointing to the crowd and playing up to him and then oh. falls down. Uh, the cheese is salty, <laughs> too. Him. He actually hey. points at him after he falls How do you fall? <laughs> Oh, Look, no this way. is why you don't celebrate <laughs> oh until the gosh. job is finished because then you may have a gigantic cheese man. Yeah. Oh, Better luck next you. time. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. You might call that the oh. meltdown. My God. Oh, oh yeah. meltdown. I see what you did there. Those dad yeah. jokes that you're bringing during the commercial breaks at the 11 are paying yeah. off. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, and some may say they're cheesy, too, by the way. So anyway. oh, okay. There you go. Okay. I'm out. You caught All that right. one? I'm out. <laughs> All right, Clay, thank you. Next at 530, we're getting a new view of one of the spring break shootings that caused so much chaos on South Beach. And police releasing a crucial clue in the search for a hit-and-run driver who slammed into a person riding a scooter and kept on going. Plus, five years after the MSD massacre, parents of some of the victims are still trying to make their voices heard in Washington. Local 10 News will be right back.
Social media is everywhere, and so are we. Reporting live at the White House in London, in Miami. Going live on here. Open daily, right here. And even trending on here. You're going to want to buckle up for this one. We bring the latest stories straight to your feed. How is one of the... Local 10 News starts right now. Right now at 5.30, we're seeing police body cam video from one of the spring break shootings that caused so much chaos on South Beach back in March. Two people were killed in those shootings. And a city-imposed curfew did not do much to control the chaos out there. Local 10's Rosh Lowe has the just-released video for us. Hey, get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Shoot you. This is from spring break when cops were chasing down Dontavious Polk wanted for murder. Let's watch the video together. They finally get their man in custody. Surveillance video shows the moments before the murder on the sidewalk. And we've stopped the graphic video before the suspect shoots the man on the ground multiple times. We basically executed the, the victim, just walking down the street and shot and killed him. And now we are seeing how police took him down. Yellow's in custody, yellow's in custody. As you remember, this was not the only incident over spring break. Take a look at this cell phone video here. Shows a family leaving dinner swallowed up by a crowd. People jumped on their vehicle and even got into it. Police were very visible throughout Miami Beach, making proactive arrests, including taking more than 70 firearms off the streets. And they responded right away in this case, which the body camera shows ending in an arrest. Yeah, as you saw there in the video, the police went after the suspect, eventually got him into custody. Outside the Miami Beach Police Department, I'm Rosh Lowe, local 10 News. All right, Ross, thank you for that. Now to another deadly shooting on Hallandale Beach, where police say two men got into an argument in the 900 block of Southwest 8th Street last night. That's when one of those guys took out a gun and shot the other one. The victim was taken to Aventura Hospital, where he passed away. Police say the shooter stayed at the scene and was being questioned. Fire marshals are investigating after one person died after a house went up in flames in Davie. Sky 10 was above the scene Thursday night along Aspen Way, just south of 595. You can see Davie Fire Rescue and the state fire marshals are both at that scene. And we're now hearing 911 calls from a deadly shooting at a Walmart in Portland Lauderdale Lakes this weekend. We do want to warn you, these calls may be difficult to listen to. They're shooting in the building. Okay. We're exiting the building. Get out. They're shooting in the back. We need um, We need a police. All right, what's the address? We need a police to uh, the Walmart on 441 in Oakland, ASAP. I think somebody just got shot. 
VSO deputies surrounded the store off North State Road 7 Tuesday. They say the victim was shot multiple times after he tried to break up a physical fight between the suspect and the female employee. 41 year old Thierry Bastien later died at the hospital from his injuries. 22 year old Tyrone Sterling was arrested and is now charged with first degree murder. And now to a crime alert out of Hollywood where police are searching for a dangerous driver who hit a person riding a go kart and never stopped. Local tenants Alex Finney is live with a critical clue police really want all of us to see. Alex. And Christy, people were warning this driver to slow down literally just seconds before crashing into Alex Ditter. It is just a horrible story as we heard from his friend and you're about to hear here. He could have died. Thankfully, he is alive and he has been in the hospital since May 1st. You hear the crash and then you hear the screams. A woman driving this red RAV4 slammed right into Alex Ditter, who was riding this go-kart back on May 1st. The crash, which happened off screen just past a row of bushes, occurred on Washington Street at South 48th Avenue. He's going to be there for eight days, and after that, he's going to start doing rehab, like to work again. Ditter speaking to us from his hospital bed. He suffered spine fractures, broken bones, and just underwent surgery. She hit him easy, like 30 miles an hour. I was completely angry because she could have killed him. You know what I mean? She could have killed him, and um, thank God she didn't. Ronald is the voice you hear in that video, letting the driver know. My friend, you went over my friend. But to his surprise, the driver, described as a woman between 50 to 60 years old, she drove right off without a care in the world that someone was injured. I jump on my truck and I try to follow. I couldn't keep up. It, she just took off. Ronald has been on the move ever since to find her so that she can be held accountable. We're asking people to help. Please find this lady. She has some damage on the front of the vehicle on the right side. It's missing the defender, defender cover. 2018 Toyota reddish. Yeah, he needs help. Loved ones have now set up a GoFundMe to help with Ditter's medical expenses. And that GoFundMe is up now on our website, local10.com, if you would like to help out. In the meantime, we know that if you have any information, if you happen to have been in this area, mind you, Washington Street, very busy road, make sure you give Broward Crime Stoppers a call. That number is 954-493-TIPS. We're live in Hollywood tonight. Alex Finney, Local 10 News. Somebody picks up that phone. Okay, thanks so much. A deadly crash on Florida's Turnpike involving a bicyclist overnight. Our cameras were right there rolling on the scene in the southbound lanes between the Griffin Road and 595 exits. Florida Highway Patrol says the 83-year-old bicyclist was riding in a prohibited area, and he actually blocked the path of a garbage truck driver, and that caused the driver to slam right into him from behind. The man died at the scene. Five years after the MSD massacre, parents of some of the victims are still trying to get meaningful gun control laws passed. Local 10's Hatzel Vela is now live to show us how they're doing it. Hatzel. Louis, two vastly different efforts. One trying to improve the safety in classrooms across the country. The other one trying to get the eyes of the nation on this book. Called Joaquin's First School Shooting. The end of the day was also my own. A heartbreaking tale of Joaquin Oliver's last day at school. His mother, Patricia, read us some tough excerpts. We hear a loud bang, then off went the alarm. A way to help people understand not just the pain, she says, but the gun violence is a serious problem in our country. This is a tool more than a book. The hope is that those who agree, she says, can use this book to spread the message. She herself will be visiting Washington to hand deliver the book to lawmakers. It's very hard to read, but it's necessary because it's no worse than being losing your own kid to gun violence. At Parkland's Golf and Country Club, set up underway for a formal gala. Live for Alyssa in honor of Alyssa Al Hadef, who we lost at MSD. This is the third year that we're doing the events. Her mother Lori tells us the funds raised are critical in keeping her daughter's legacy going and strengthening. Make our schools safe, a nonprofit aiming to do just that. Well, we are going to raise money to help to pass Alyssa's law nationwide as a standard level of school safety protection in every school across this country. Alyssa's law, already a state law, is mass notification in a life-threatening emergency situation where a teacher can simply press a button that is directly linked to law enforcement. 
And so the event here in Parkland starts in less than half an hour. Any information you may want to want on both nonprofits, you can find, of course, on Local10.com. For now, reporting live from Parkland, I'm Hatsafala, Local 10 News. All right, Hassel, thank you for that. President Biden will be preparing uh, this weekend for something real important. It'll be next week's very high stakes meeting with lawmakers on the debt ceiling before the country actually defaults on about $31 trillion. But first, the commander in chief highlighted today's job report, which comes on the heels of another interest rate hike by the Fed. Our DC Bureau Chief Ben Kennedy is live at the White House with this developing story. Ben. Christy, Louie, that jobs report you were talking about was no doubt good news, but President Biden said there was more work to be done as the Fed is set to meet next week where they could raise interest rates again. The really good news. President Biden touted encouraging news when it comes to the economy as the nation added 253,000 jobs in April and unemployment dropped to 3.4 percent, matching a 54-year low, a sign the labor market remains resilient despite inflation. Inflation is now down 40 percent. Since last summer, it's come down the last nine months in a row. And to keep inflation down, the Federal Reserve raised interest rates by a quarter percentage point, the 10th straight hike since March of last year. It comes as Biden prepares to meet with top congressional leaders next week to discuss the debt ceiling. After Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen announced the U.S. could default by June 1st if it's not raised. The last thing this country needs, after all we've been through, is a manufactured crisis, and that's what this is, a manufactured crisis. His remarks come after House Republicans the bill is passed. passed a bill to raise the debt limit, legislation that would also cut trillions in federal spending over the next decade. But the White House insists on increasing the nation's spending with no strings attached. I'm disappointed in the White House. They're missing in action. Uh, this should be the biggest issue they're dealing with every day. And again, that House bill does not have the votes needed in the Senate to pass, and even if it did, President Biden said he would veto it. Reporting live at the White House, Ben Kennedy, Local 10 News. Ben, thank you. The father of a former MMA fighter is out of jail after being arrested for a shooting at his son's home. Jorge Masvidal Sr. is now charged with attempted second-degree murder. We're going to tell you what cops found inside the fighter's home, though, all new at 6. <laughs> it's not every day that you see a tire rolling down the street. The wheels on this bus go round and round and right down the road. I'm going to tell you how the students are doing. Plus, your summer vacation may not be everything it's cracked up to be. We'll explain why one popular park may be dealing with tourist gridlock. But first, a live look outside our weather cameras on a spectacular day here. The beginning of the weekend, Cinco de Mayo, lots to celebrate. We'll tell you if the weather will hold for this Grand Prix Miami weekend when Betty joins us next for the forecast. Never miss a beat with Local 10 Plus. And it's right here in our own backyard. A one-stop shop for all your news. North Rock Island Road has since reopened. From traffic updates and weather alerts to cooking, home projects, health, H2O, and politics. Defining moment for the governor. We've got you covered anytime, anywhere. Local 10 is right there with you on the scene of breaking news, in the stands at sporting events, and exploring SoFlo's hidden gems. Stream at home or on the go, 24 hours a day, only on Local 10 Plus.
Social media is everywhere, and so are we. Reporting live at the White House in London, in Miami. Going live on here. Open daily, right here. And even trending on here. You're going to want to buckle up for this one. We bring the latest stories straight to your feed. How is one of the... Firefighters battling a warehouse inferno in Commerce, California early this morning. More than 100 firefighters were battling this three alarm fire for hours. No injuries have been reported. The mother of an Atlanta shooting suspect is now speaking out. 24 year old Dion Patterson was arrested after a nearly eight hour manhunt on Wednesday. Police say he opened fire inside a medical office building, killing 38 year old Amy St. Pierre and wounding four others. The victim was an employee of the CDC. The suspect's mother says he is a former Coast Guard member who became violent during an appointment because he couldn't get a prescription for an anxiety medicine. From the medical standpoint, it is real. And when somebody is saying they need help or you see that they're acting out of sorts, they need help, help them, just don't disregard them. Patterson was arrested at a nearby condo complex after police say he carjacked a vehicle to get away. He is charged with, with murder as well as four counts of aggravated assault. A Virginia school board is trying to limit the amount of damages a first grade teacher can get after she was shot by her a six year old student in the middle of class. It's been four months since Abby Zwerner was shot in Newport News and she's filed a $40 million lawsuit against the school board. But the board's attorney has now filed a motion arguing that Zwerner is only entitled to file for workman's compensation instead. We're not going to tolerate this and that it's wrong to say that teachers it's okay to get shot by it, and then you just get workers comp. That's not fair, and it's wrong. Getting shot in a school system is not part of our contract. We wasn't supposed to be getting shot in a school. The school board has not commented on their motion. A rough ride to school for some students in Connecticut was caught on camera. There it is. Home security video shows one of the real wheels of the school bus come off and just start rolling down the street. The witnesses say the bus was carrying preschool students and no one was hurt, but it was still very shocking. Both rear tires looked like they had uh, come off and the, 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 um, the school bus was sitting on its axle. After about 20 minutes, a tow truck showed up along with another bus to take the students to school. The school district is investigating why those rear tires suddenly came off. At least the kids weren't hurt. That was pretty scary. I know it was indeed. All right, one of the main reasons, or one of the main roads, I should say, in the Yosemite National Park has been closed is for this. The repairs. Big Oat Flat Road has a big crack about 200 feet long and up to four feet deep. The park is working with the Federal Highway Administration to fix it, but the closure could last until the end of July in the middle of the busy summer tourist season. The Fuego Volcano in Guatemala City has erupted, forcing the evacuation of more than 1,000 people. Tourists are being warned against venturing into the volcanic fallout zone. 
Ted Nugent just announced his farewell tour, but backlash over his extreme political views has already led to one show being canceled. His July 18th gig at Avondale Brewing Company in Birmingham was nixed after the venue was flooded with angry comments on Facebook and Instagram. Nugent is kicking off that tour July 12th at the Seminole Casino in Immokalee before playing the Hard Rock Live in Orlando on the 13th and the Hard Rock here in Hollywood Friday, July 14th. And this is a response posted on Ted Nugent's Twitter feed, which says it is run by the TedNugent.com team. Quote, with help from the Motor City Madman himself, it shows an article about the cancellation with the caption reading, liars and haters drunk on stupid, incapable to debate me. Okay, okay. well, there's that. All right, <laughs> wow. let's talk weather. Let's change uh, things let's up. Let's do this instead. <laughs> let's look outside from our Mount Sinai Medical Center Tower Cam. A gorgeous day. We're heading into the weekend. Cinco de Mayo. Lots of folks excited to get to out there and... And get their nachos. And get their nachos and get <laughs> and their, their margaritas. Grand Prix on and get a taco. All that good stuff. It's a good weekend to be in South Florida. Hi, Betty. Hey, guys. Pool parties, patio parties, we're all good, especially on this Friday night. It has been another banner day for us. Our high temperature was 88 in Miami. That's pretty close to our normal high. And we were close to our normal low. A 72 is where we should be. We did 70 this morning in Miami. Our Hollywood Beach camera, look at the blue sky that we see out there. Temperatures currently low 80s, Fort Lauderdale, mid 80s elsewhere. A great beach day, east northeast winds around 10 to 15 miles per hour. And now that we've got the easterly wind flow established, the rip current risk is being driven higher. So that's going to be the case through the weekend. That east northeast breeze is going to get a little faster uh, racing over those waters. If you're taking the boats out, uh, just be mindful that there will be some chop out on the waters. Bays looking at a moderate chop and seas running about two to three feet for tomorrow. Our forecast for tonight. Let's get into the night. It's showing uh, a few clouds out there later on, but no rainfall. East northeast winds. Temperatures will drop into the 70s and hold in the 70s overnight. So a very mild night on the way for us. No rainfall, though, in the forecast for tonight, though things are starting to change over the peninsula. We see that with the increase in clouds coming in from the Gulf waters. Minor little impulse triggering some rainfall. Uh, looks as though that rain is going to head for the northwest coast of Florida if any of those showers can hang together and I think they will but we are starting to get into a setup where with a little bit of daytime heating and minor impulses spilling on down the peninsula we'll just have that better chance of seeing a shower or two pop up even over South Florida. Not necessarily saying we're going to have widespread rainfall for Metro Broward and Dade tomorrow, but our forecast model showing after some morning sunshine, we may get a couple showers going over inland Broward or Dade, but it looks as though some bigger storms may favor Collier County and closer to the west coast of South Florida. So our outdoor plans aren't getting canceled tomorrow. We're not even canceling anything on Sunday, though we do need to be prepared for a few showers riding along the east coast, especially Sunday morning. By the noon hour, we should start to trend drier through Broward and Dade. Here's that seven day planner. Next several days of May, more mid and upper 80s on the way. Rain chance about 20 to 30 percent. So we don't have zero percent rain days coming up. Louie. All right. Thank you, Betty. Our cameras were there as friends and family of a loyal local 10 viewer celebrated his 106th trip around the sun. Oh, you got to meet Ludwig right here. Uh, he says he loves Channel 10. He is a World War II veteran who makes sure to wear his military hat with pride whenever he leaves his apartment after serving in the military. He worked into his 90s doing carpentry and he's quite the jokester as well. We're told listen to what he had to say when he was asked about how he made it to 106. Well, as I've told other people, the bed upstairs doesn't want me, the bed downstairs doesn't want me, so I'm stuck in the middle. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's a good thing. <laughs> Ludwig says that another secret to his long and fulfilling life is the love he has for his partner. He says that she gave him a life worth living. Happy birthday, oh, Ludwig. Oh, happy birthday to you. And, and it is it's so important to be surrounded by people you love. Every day. Yeah. Every day. Well, there's so much mystery surrounding the Mona Lisa. Who is she? What is she smiling about? <laughs> but have, you ever, have you ever wondered about the bridge in the background? Ha! An Italian historian claims it's the Romito Bridge in the Tuscan town of La Terina. He says he used historical documents and official archives to figure out Leonardo da Vinci lived near the bridge between oh. 1501 and and 1503. It is a painting that continues to mesmerize and provoke mystery and discussion all these years <laughs> later. Hmm.
Hmm. Curious eyes. Those eyes. What is she thinking? Uh, I don't know. Well, look, look at this. Let's think about this. This is a mystery in the woods in New Jersey where hundreds of pounds of pasta was just dumped. Residents estimate this pile of spaghetti must have taken about 15 wheelbarrow trips, but no one is taking responsibility for it. People who live there say they're used to seeing illegal dumping like this because their town doesn't have bulk pickup. It's a financial constraint. When you throw out a couch, it's $300. To call up Sodexo or waste management, it's a few hundred dollars for every single thing you want to throw out. I wound up getting four dumpsters, filled all the dumpsters to the brim of tires and furniture and other garbage that just washes up and floats up. It's very frustrating. It would cost less than $100 a year to add bulk service to their regular garbage pickup, but the town council voted it down, so it looks like the illegal dumping will continue but the pasta is a kind of a mystery. Well, I mean, I get, I get Jersey, couches I, and I get tires, but who cooked all that pasta? I think the better question is what's buried underneath the pasta. It is New Jersey after all. So <laughs> I'm just saying. Just saying. I used to watch The Sopranos. <laughs> <laughs> You're evil. All right, still ahead here at 6 at Local 10, live in London, counting down to tomorrow's coronation of King Charles III. We're going to show you how rehearsals are still going on. Detectives have identified the suspect who went on a deadly shooting rampage at a 7-Eleven early this morning. But first, it was a murder that stumped authorities for decades. A woman shot and killed at her front door by someone dressed as a clown. Find out how this cold case has finally been cracked when Local 10 News comes right back. Never miss a beat with Local 10 Plus. And it's right here in our own backyard. A one-stop shop for all your news. North Rock Island Road has since reopened. From traffic updates and weather alerts to cooking, home projects, health, H2O, and politics. Defining moment for the governor. We've got you covered anytime, anywhere. Local 10 is right there with you on the scene of breaking news, in the stands at sporting events, and exploring Soflo's hidden gems. Stream at home or on the go, 24 hours a day, only on Local 10 Plus.
Social media is everywhere, and so are we. Reporting live at the White House in London, in Miami. Tonight on 2020, it was a murder that stunned South Florida. Take a deep dive into the clown killer mystery in Palm Beach County. The victim shot in the face when she opened her door by a gun-toting clown holding flowers and balloons. It took decades, but detectives finally arrested the victim's husband's lover for her murder. More than a decade after the murder, Sheila Keen Warren married the victim's husband and moved to Tennessee, but DNA evidence finally led to her arrest in 2017. She's now pled guilty to second degree murder. Don't miss 2020 tonight, beginning at 9 p.m. only here on Local 10. And stay with us for Local 10 News at 11 o'clock. And that will do it for us at 5.30. Time now for the News at 6. Developing now, child tragedy. A boy gunned down during a double murder suicide. The boy was one of two innocent victims at the wrong place and at the wrong time. I'm Christina Vasquez with What I've Just Learned. Also developing, student arrested for a deadly threat on the same day we learn about strict new school safety rules. New information about a shooting breaking last night at 6. Son coming to get you. The father of a UFC legend now charged. Will the rain stay away this weekend? Don't finalize your plans until you hear Betty's forecast. I'm Will Manso at Hard Rock where they're ready to race. See what happened when Tyreek Hill got behind the wheel. The news starts right now. Good evening, everyone. I'm Nicole Perez, live in London. The coronation of King Charles is just hours away. We'll show you how the royal family spent the day preparing. Thanks, Nicole. And now to our top story at 6 o'clock, a triple shooting at a 7-Eleven in Dania Beach that investigators are now calling a double murder-suicide. And one of the victims is an 11-year-old boy who was simply buying ice cream when he was shot and killed. Let's get right to Local 10's Christina Vasquez, live in Dania Beach with the very latest. Christina. And his teacher is telling us tonight that he was beloved and bright. This as we learn more from a witness about how he was brutally murdered and BSO telling us he was not the only shooting victim. The details are chilling. A fifth grader shot dead in cold blood by a man police say he didn't know while buying ice cream. It started just after 11 last night as Maximo Limas was working at the Laredo Taco Company inside the Stania Beach 7-Eleven. As 11-year-old Saeed Nabig Ali was buying ice cream with his brother and friends, Limas saw a man who police have now identified as 29-year-old Darren Rosenthal fire a shot at a man sitting in a van in the parking lot. He was just chilling in his car, minding his business. Then Lima said Rosenthal walked inside and shot and killed the boy before turning the gun on himself. He shot him in the head once and then on the floor he went pow pow again. Killing him, that adult male gunman then fatally shot himself. One of Saeed's teachers sharing with Local 10 News a statement his academy shared with the school community that read in part, he was a pleasant, well-mannered and bright boy. He loved to play chess and always got excited at the thought of playing soccer. At this time, the motive for this shooting is unknown. Detectives on this triple shooting case are working to understand what motivated the shooter. BSO tells us so far investigators believe the gunman and both victims, the man in his car in the parking lot who was rushed to an area hospital for treatment and the 11 year old who died did not know each other. This does appear to be a random act. Court records show in 2014 and 2016, Rosenthal had a record of past charges to include drug possession in Miami-Dade. Back here live, as you can see, this remains an active investigation. In fact, BSO says if you have any information about this case, to give them a call. Reporting live for you tonight, I'm Christina Vasquez, Local 10 News. So heartbreaking. Okay, Christina, thanks a lot. And onto a safety alert and a major change coming to Broward County Public Schools for the next school year. It affects every student. The change is happening on the same day that police arrest a high school student for making a deadly threat. And Local 10's Cody Weddle live now in Coral Springs for us with much more. Cody. And Calvin, related to that threat, we have learned from Coral Springs Police that they have arrested 18-year-old Katrina Petit, and she is a student here at Terravella High School. As you said there, this is in, in relation to those threats we saw yesterday, pretty graphically, graphically threatening uh, to conduct a school shooting at an unspecified school in Broward County. Those threats, of course, they spread around social media, caused a lot of concern among parents and students. Yesterday, we heard from Broward County Public Schools. They praised the people who reported this threat, 
We have been hearing from students here today, pretty shocked to learn of what happened. Cause you know, I come to school and I expect to be safe, you know, and when something like that happens, it's gonna like catch me, you know, by surprise, so. Um, you know, it's definitely something that you don't think is gonna happen every day. Uh, it's definitely something not to take lightly either. Uh, things like this, like, I mean, I don't know why people do that for amusement, but it's something like, it's, it's not a joke. And so this news about uh, this arrest made comes after Broward County Schools announced new security measures going into next school year. Next school year, all students will be required to use only clear see-through backpacks and bags. This, of course, is meant as an extra security layer so that the contents of all bags will be visible. We heard from a Broward County School Board member about this new policy. I think it's vitally important that as a board that we continue to create layers of school safety protection in our schools and to be able to have clear backpacks, you know, is it's so important because we have to prevent the weapons from getting into our schools. So this will act as a deterrent or, you know, hypothetically a security person could see what is in the backpack. And so as for that 18 year old Katrina Petit, she could now face felony charges for this threat. That's the latest here in Coral Springs. I'm Cody Weddle, Local 10 News. Cody, thank you. Right now, the father of UFC legend Jorge Masvidal is out of bond. Local 10 News was there as he walked out of jail this afternoon. Masvidal Sr. was arrested for shooting another man during an argument at his son's home. This story was breaking last night during the news at six. Local 10's Janine Stanwood is live with it all. Janine. When Masvidal Sr. bonded out of jail here at the Turner Guilford Knight Correctional Facility, there was nobody here to get him, but he still had plenty to say to us. Walking out of jail and into a crush of cameras is 67 year old Jorge Masvidal Sr. Son coming to get you? No. He's the father of the former UFC fighter of the same name, now facing a charge of second degree attempted murder after police say he shot a man inside his son's six bedroom house on Thursday afternoon. Why did you shoot that man? Why are you saying why you, why you say things like that? Eh? Are you a police or what? Masvidal Sr. says that's all a lie. He was just with friends and doesn't know why he was arrested and claims he doesn't know about the shooting. No sé, que no sé, no sé. But detectives say it all started with some kind of argument inside the house just outside Kendall. The victim, Luis Leoncini, who we're told is a family acquaintance, said Masvidal Sr. shot him in the arms. He was rushed to the hospital as police converge on the home. They were able to get the other members of the uh, of the residents out of the home without incident. Detectives scoured the residence, and according to their report, the search revealed a 38 caliber revolver inside a kitchen cabinet. Masvidal Sr. was questioned and arrested. His mixed martial arts practicing son was not there when it happened, but did show up later, not thrilled to see us. His father leaving the Turner Guilford Knight Correctional Facility alone. Does your son know you're getting out today? Yeah. <laughs> Masvidal Sr. facing a very serious charge, but he says he's looking forward tonight to spending Cinco de Mayo with his son. As for that victim, he is still recovering. At last check, he was stable. We're in West Miami Dade. I'm Janine Stanwood, Local 10 News. Janine, thank you. And now we head across the pond where people were treated to a special visit by King Charles on the eve of his coronation after a walkthrough for tomorrow's ceremony at Westminster Abbey. And First Lady Dr. Jill Biden is already in place for tomorrow's events. She met with the Princess of Wales and the First Lady of Ukraine, Olena Zelenska, at Buckingham Palace tonight. And we are just hours away from the historic coronation of King Charles. And anchor Nicole Perez is in place, and she's live in London to show us how the king and royal family are getting ready. Nicole. Well, the Royals have been preparing all week and they are ready for tomorrow. There was some rain today and the forecast does have it for tomorrow for several hours, so we can expect to see rain. The King will be crowned inside Westminster Abbey, but there are two processions, one that happens before on the way to the Abbey and one that happens on the back end. They're both outdoors, but the people we spoke to said they are ready to brave the rain. It was amazing, yes. really nice. That's what we've been waiting for. <laughs> And the rain came down, the hailstones, but it was all worth it. Even the rain couldn't keep royal fans away from their moment at seeing the king and queen in front of Westminster Abbey. 
Charlie. Yeah. Oh, it's a good lad. Good lad. I waved at him. He waved at me. He went very good guy. Good guy. And Camilla looked good as well. With less than a day left before the coronation, the royal family rehearsing the long-awaited moment. Some of them have been to the two royal weddings. These women came all the way from Kentucky and have never missed a royal event. My memory is that in 1953, I was in the fourth grade. My family had gotten the first TV, and the first thing I remember on the TV was watching the coronation. I think we need to give Charles a chance, and I really feel like here the English people feel the same way. We all put our hands out, and he shook our hands, and he, at, he said, thank you for coming. The royal family taking a break from last-minute rehearsals to say hi to the public. The excitement building for a day 70 years in the making. Oh, like the carriages, the procession, like seeing what they're going to wear, getting to experience it and see it. Just seeing videos from Elizabeth's coronation, I'm excited just to be part of the whole thing. I'm very proud, very honored, and also the main thing is it brings everybody together from around the world, which is something that is very special. So tomorrow, everything starts at Buckingham Palace, the first procession known as the King's Procession. It's about a little less than a mile and a half. They'll make their way to Westminster Abbey, where the King will be crowned. It'll be about two hours there, and then they'll make their way back in the coronation procession. And it'll end with a fly pass. It'll last about six minutes, and the royal family will be watching from the balcony. We're live in London. I'm Nicole Perez, Local 10 News. Okay, Nicole, thanks a lot. We want to remind you that you can watch the coronation of King Charles III live right here on Local 10. Starting at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning, and Nicole, of course, will be right there for it all. Look for her live reports right here on Local 10 News, starting at 9 a.m. Florida lawmakers have finalized a record $117 billion state budget on the last day of the state session, and it's now headed to the governor's desk to sign. Reviewing this massive spending plan will likely take weeks, and it's typically one of the last bills signed each session. The governor will now have the final say in what stays in the plan and what goes. Once signed, the budget will take effect July 1st. What a weekend it is in South Florida. The Formula One Miami Grand Prix right here in South Florida and only Local 10 is there. And we've been getting ready for the race for months now. Local 10 Sports Director Will Manso is live with the excitement and the special shows that we're going to have for you. Will. Months is right. It has been a long few months getting ready to bring you this coverage and it's exciting to be here finally for this big race weekend. It's exciting to see all the stars out as well. It's interesting when you've got the drivers, right? The 20 of them, the superstars of the sport. But then when you see superstars from other sports wanting to be part of the action, including Dolphins wide receiver Tyree Kill. He's one of the best receivers in the game. The cheetah, as they call him, no speed, but I don't even think he knows what this kind of speed is, close to 200 miles per hour. Tyree getting to get in one of the race cars today. They are on the track now. He didn't have to drive it. He got to test it, but certainly got the feel of what that may be like. Meanwhile, the man who did get the test Few faster than Max Verstappen. This guy is a champion. He's the leader in points, and he was in his practice round today. The Red Bull team, along with his teammate Sergio Perez, have been dominating for the last couple of years. And it was one of the questions Verstappen was asked this week. What makes him, his teammate, Red Bull, so good? I mean, I've been I've been in this also in 2021. You know, where you always have to have to be perfect. So, in a way, it doesn't really. Um, you know, change anything. You always want to do the best you can. And I think we can be very happy as a team as well, you know, to have a car like this that we can um, do this week in, week out. He's been doing it. Meanwhile, I told you about the preparation for our coverage. It gets started tonight. Don't miss our primetime special. My short old belt tequilas ready to race. Starts at 8 o'clock. You'll hear from Verstappen, Washley. Also go across the pond over to the UK, bring you coverage there. The, his, the history of Formula One there. We'll chat with local driver Logan Sargent, part of the Williams Racing Team. Everything to get you ready for the Miami Grand Prix. And then, of course, on Sunday, big race day right here on Local 10. Our pre-race coverage starts at 1.30 with our Maestro Del Bell tequila ready to race. Then you can watch the race at 2 o'clock. The coverage begins right here on Local 10. And following the race, our finish line coverage after the race. So I would say that if you want to get into the F1 fun, keep it right here at Local 10. We'll bring you that fun throughout the next few days. As a story from Miami Gardens, I'm Will Manso, Local 10 News. Well, I'm guessing you're you're as excited as some of the racers out there having gone to the UK to see the excitement F1 firsthand, huh? 
Yeah, it, it is interesting as you get to learn the sport and talk to the drivers and understand what it takes. It's not just you like turn the key in the ignition and drive. There is a lot of work that goes into it. So to see it all come together the last few months and see it here in Miami Gardens, it's exciting. Okay, looking forward to your coverage. Look great out there. Thanks a lot there, man. Uh, you filed your taxes if you did with TurboTax. You could be getting some cash back. Plus, developing out of Texas, a growing inferno after an explosion at a Shell chemical plant. Look for a live report on World News tonight at 6.30. Ending the week just as we started it. I'm Chief Certified Meteorologist Betty Davis. It is nice and dry. We'll talk about the changes in store for Saturday and Sunday. I'll let you know if you should be ready for some rain showers. Good evening, South Florida. I'm Nicole Perez, and we've got a busy news day ahead of us. My journey in journalism started right here in South Florida and is taking me all over the world. Growing up, a basketball court was where I felt most at home. The one thing that connects me to South Florida is my family. I was raised in a typical South Florida household, and now I'm raising my family here too. Family's not an important thing. It's everything for me. And Local 10 News is not only where I work, it's home. Local 10's Nicole Perez, putting the local in Local 10. Well, better late than never, Cuba's May Day March finally taking place today. Four days later than normal, the May Day March was canceled on May 1st because of a gas shortage and bad weather. Today, Cubans showed up well before sunrise along the waterfront in Malacón to celebrate International Workers' Day. Miami-Dade County Mayor Daniela Levine Cava has coronavirus. A spokesperson for the mayor says she has cold-like symptoms but is not seriously ill. This is the third time she's had COVID. And it comes as the World Health Organization announced today that COVID-19 is no longer a global health emergency. The pandemic was first declared in January 2020, but cases have been on the decline. And soon the CDC will be tracking the virus without its director, Dr. Rochelle Walensky, announcing her resignation today. Her last day will be on June 30th. An interim director has not yet been announced. Check it out with our Betty Davis. So much happening this weekend, Betty, and everyone looking to the skies to see if there's going to be rain. Which event are you doing? Mm. You know, that's a good question. <laughs> Possibly F1, you know? Okay, that sounds I'm good. Sunday. What about you, Eden? 
I don't know yet. I kind of want to sleep in, Betty. Uh, that's so, an idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Well, you know what? We've got weather for all of those things. A few showers make for great sleeping weather, and then dry conditions make for some great race weather, right? So let's delve right into it. Today was a dry day, start to finish as expected. Very warm, too. We hit 88 for the high in Miami. And now here we are with a temperature of 84 degrees. East breeze will keep it dry for the evening, mainly clear around 10 p.m. May get some scattered clouds working in a little bit later on tonight and notice that northeast wind stays up. So as the wind stirs, temperatures will not drop under 70. We're forecasting lows, low and mid 70s out there. Things do look a little different today on the satellite and radar imagery for Florida over what we saw for the balance of this week. Remember, when we had hardly a cloud over our skies. That is changing. You can see some of the high clouds over the central part of the state and a little bit of rainfall working in around that northwest coast of Florida. Maybe a few sprinkles managing to be generated. So around the ridge of high pressure, we're starting to get these little bits of energy or little impulses or a little bit of moisture rotating in around that ridge on the periphery of it. And so that is why with this type of setup, though you usually would associate a ridge with dry weather, on the periphery, we may be able to get a few showers and storms going for the weekend. So that's in the weather plan. This is what it looks like on our forecast radar in clouds. Sunny start to the day and then watch what happens as we go through the hours. By the afternoon, the forecast model showed some a few showers developing over inland Broward and Dade. It doesn't look as though we're going to have widespread rainfall in our neighborhoods. In fact, the stronger or bigger storms may just favor that west side of the peninsula, that west coast area of uh, South Florida. But by Sunday morning, the forecast model is painting a few showers gliding down the east coast. So coastal and some of our metro areas around Fort Lauderdale and Miami could get in some showers uh, with this particular setup. So that's why in the seven day planner, you'll notice that the rain chance is a little higher on Sunday. Here's what the winds will be doing. They will be picking up the pace. Tomorrow, sustained 10 to 15 from the east northeast, gusting to about 20. And then Sunday, we'll have easterly winds 15 to 20 miles per hour and gusting over that at times. As for temperatures, we're heading up toward the mid 80s tomorrow, and the rip current risk is high. The seven day planner, you can check it out on the local 10 weather app. Okay, thanks a lot, Betty. And still ahead, we're feeling golden on this Friday night. We're, we're checking in with the Miami Heat's secret weapon for their playoff run coming up. And yeah, there is playoff fever along with the F1 fever in South Florida. I'm Will Manso back in Miami Gardens. So we get you ready for F1. We also talk about the Heat and the Panthers and the latest on Jimmy Butler. Is Jimmy going to be available tomorrow for Game 3 against the Knicks? We've got that and more coming your way next in sports. Good evening, South Florida. I'm Nicole Perez, and we've got a busy news day ahead of us. My journey in journalism started right here in South Florida and is taking me all over the world. Growing up, 
a basketball court was where I felt most at home. The one thing that connects me to South Florida is my family. I was raised in a typical South Florida household. <laughs> And now I'm raising my family here too. Family's not an important thing. It's everything for me. And Local 10 News is not only where I work, it's home. Local 10's Nicole Perez, putting the local in Local 10. You're watching Local 10 Sports with Will Manso. Uh, back here at Hard Rock Stadium, it is F1 weekend. We got all that excitement coming up. We discussed earlier, but we're in the middle of a playoff fever here in South Florida. The Heat and the Panthers both making some runs in the postseason. The Heat back in action tomorrow as they host the Knicks game three of the Eastern Conference semifinals. The question everyone wants to know is, will Jimmy Butler play? All indications are is that he will play. Now, that's not official yet. Jimmy posted this video of him working out, recovering from that ankle injury that he hurt in game one, kept him out of game two. Eric Spolstra today said they'll announce officially tomorrow, right before the game, whether Jimmy can play or not. But it's leaning in that direction for Jimmy to play. His teammates, as they practice today, understood that Butler has done everything in his power to get back for tomorrow. Jimmy is a different character. <laughs> so, you know, I, I feel like the will of him is not going to, he's not going to tell you exactly how he feels. For us, he said he feels good, so we, we, we go with that. Only one place you can watch game three, that is right here on Local 10. Our coverage begins 2 o'clock, our countdown to tip-off show. The game, by the way, at 3.30, so keep it here on Local 10 tomorrow for game three between the Heat and the Knicks. As for those Panthers, what a story. Now 2-0 in the series. Their lead over the Maple Leafs, thanks in large part to Sergei Bobrovsky. What a performance by the goalie last night in stopping 35 shots. Panthers went into Toronto, won both games, and now come back home for Game 3 Sunday in Sunrise, up 2-0 in the series. Marlins, meanwhile, in action today against the Cubs. Ian Happ drills a two-run home run. Cubs win it. 4-1 to the final as the Marlins have hit a slump in the last week. All right, we got all the coverage F1 this weekend. Again, 8 o'clock, our Maestro del Bell Tequila Ready to Race special. A full hour to get you ready. You do not want to miss it. We can't wait to see that. That's Store from Miami Gardens tonight. I'm Will Manso, Local 10 News. Looking forward to that. Thanks, Will. In Wild Florida, Good Samaritans helping a trapped crocodile. Monroe Sheriff's deputies and agents for the FWC worked together to wrangle this crocodile that became stuck near a road while trying to get to a canal. Officers feared it would walk into oncoming traffic, but they managed to guide it to safety. And tonight's time to smile. We are dancing into the weekend. Check this out here. The Miami Heat Golden Oldies are in playoff form. The city of Pembroke Pines posting this video to Instagram of the Oldies practicing at the Southwest Focal Point Community Center. The Oldies will be taking the court. Music and all. Yeah, I love that song. During the <laughs> Heat's playoff run. Yeah, when they return to the Kaseya Center. This weekend, look at them go. How can you oh, not yeah. smile when seeing that video, right? I love that, yeah. They got some moves. <laughs> Thank you for watching. See you again tonight over the class. And remember, you can always get up to the minute information on our website, local10news.com. World News Tonight is next.
Social media is everywhere, and so are we. Reporting live at the White House in London, in Miami. Going live on here. Open daily, right here. And even trending on here. You're going to want to buckle up for this one. We bring the latest stories straight to your feed. How is one of the... Good evening, South Florida. I'm Nicole Perez, and we've got a busy news day ahead of us. My journey in journalism started right here in South Florida and is taking me all over the world. Growing up, a basketball court was where I felt most at home. The one thing that connects me to South Florida is my family. I was raised in a typical South Florida household, and now I'm raising my family here too. Family's not an important thing. It's everything for me. And Local 10 News is not only where I work, it's home. Local 10's Nicole Perez, putting the local in Local 10.
Never miss a beat with Local 10 Plus. And it's right here in our own backyard. A one-stop shop for all your news. North Rock Island Road has since reopened. From traffic updates and weather alerts to cooking, home projects, health, H2O, and politics. Defining moment for the governor. We've got you covered anytime, anywhere. Local 10 is right there with you on the scene of breaking news, in the stands at sporting events, and exploring SoFlo's hidden gems. Stream at home or on the go, 24 hours a day, only on Local 10 Plus. Social media is everywhere, and so are we. Reporting live at the White House. England in Miami. Going live on here. Open daily right here. And even trending on here. You're going to want to buckle up for this one. We bring the latest stories straight to your feed. How is one of the... Good evening, South Florida. I'm Nicole Perez, and we've got a busy news day ahead of us. My journey in journalism started right here in South Florida and is taking me all over the world. Growing up, a basketball court was where I felt most at home. The one thing that connects me to South Florida is my family. I was raised in a typical South Florida household, and now I'm raising my family here too. Family's not an important thing. It's everything for me. And Local 10 News is not only where I work, it's home. Local 10's Nicole Perez, putting the local in Local 10.
Never miss a beat with Local 10 Plus. And it's right here in our own backyard. A one-stop shop for all your news. North Rock Island Road has since reopened. From traffic updates and weather alerts to cooking, home projects, health, H2O, and politics. Defining moment for the governor. We've got you covered anytime, anywhere. Local 10 is right there with you on the scene of breaking news, in the stands at sporting events, and exploring SoFlo's hidden gems. Stream at home or on the go, 24 hours a day, only on Local 10 Plus. Social media is everywhere, and so are we. Reporting live at the White House in London, in Miami. Going live on here. Open daily, right here. And even trending on here. You're going to want to buckle up for this one. We bring the latest stories straight to your feed. How is one of the... Good evening, South Florida. I'm Nicole Perez, and we've got a busy news day ahead of us. My journey in journalism started right here in South Florida and is taking me all over the world. Growing up, a basketball court was where I felt most at home. The one thing that connects me to South Florida is my family. I was raised in a typical South Florida household, and now I'm raising my family here too. Family's not an important thing. It's everything for me. And Local 10 News is not only where I work, it's home. Local 10's Nicole Perez, putting the local in Local 10.
Never miss a beat with Local 10 Plus. And it's right here in our own backyard. A one-stop shop for all your news. North Rock Island Road has since reopened. From traffic updates and weather alerts to cooking, home projects, health, H2O, and politics. Defining moment for the governor. We've got you covered anytime, anywhere. Local 10 is right there with you on the scene of breaking news, in the stands at sporting events, and exploring Soflo's hidden gems. Stream at home or on the go, 24 hours a day. Only on Local 10 Plus. Social media is everywhere, and so are we. Reporting live at the White House in London, in Miami. Going live on here. Open daily, right here. And even trending on here. You're going to want to buckle up for this one. We bring the latest stories straight to your feed. How is one of the... Good evening, South Florida. I'm Nicole Perez, and we've got a busy news day ahead of us. My journey in journalism started right here in South Florida and is taking me all over the world. Growing up, a basketball court was where I felt most at home. The one thing that connects me to South Florida is my family. I was raised in a typical South Florida household, and now I'm raising my family here too. Family's not an important thing. It's everything for me. And Local 10 News is not only where I work, it's home. Local 10's Nicole Perez, putting the local in Local 10.
never miss a beat with Local 10 Plus. And it's right here in our own backyard. A one-stop shop for all your news. North Rock Island Road has since reopened. From traffic updates and weather alerts to cooking, home projects, health, H2O, and politics. Defining moment for the governor. We've got you covered anytime, anywhere. Local 10 is right there with you on the scene of breaking news, in the stands at sporting events, and exploring SoFlo's hidden gems. Stream at home or on the go 24 hours a day. Only on Local 10 Plus. Social media is everywhere, and so are we. Reporting live at the White House in London, in Miami. Going live on here. Open daily, right here. And even trending on here. You're going to want to buckle up for this one. We bring the latest stories straight to your feed. How is one of the... Good evening, South Florida. I'm Nicole Perez, and we've got a busy news day ahead of us. My journey in journalism started right here in South Florida and is taking me all over the world. Growing up, a basketball court was where I felt most at home. The one thing that connects me to South Florida is my family. I was raised in a typical South Florida household, and now I'm raising my family here too. Family's not an important thing. It's everything for me. And Local 10 News is not only where I work, it's home. Local 10's Nicole Perez, putting the local in Local 10.
Never miss a beat with Local 10 Plus. And it's right here in our own backyard. A one-stop shop for all your news. North Rock Island Road has since reopened. From traffic updates and weather alerts to cooking, home projects, health, H2O, and politics. Defining moment for the governor. We've got you covered anytime, anywhere. Local 10 is right there with you on the scene of breaking news, in the stands at sporting events, and exploring SoFlo's hidden gems. Stream at home or on the go, 24 hours a day, only on Local 10 Plus. Social media is everywhere, and so are we. Reporting live at the White House in London, in Miami. Going live on here. Open daily, right here. And even trending on here. You're going to want to buckle up for this one. We bring the latest stories straight to your feed. How is one of the...